It is Thursday, March 28th of 2019, and I am at the end of a long dental journey today. Close to the end. Maybe it's not the end. I'll tell you all about it right here on Guy's Daily Drive. After an extended period of time, which will mean nothing to those of you who are watching this video, but it was like four or five minutes while I kind of got on track to the road that I wanted to be on. This is such an awful road. This is Maryland 210, and Maryland should be ashamed of this road. Always under construction, and it's always just crap. But it's the only way, easily, to get to where I need to go today, which is my dentist's office. And this is like a major step in the whole saga of my back to molars that has been going on for quite some time now. Uh, for those who don't remember or weren't part, you know, weren't watching or listening to Guy's Daily Drive when this all started. Uh, I, I had a crown on one of my back molars lower right. And I was eating an English muffin when the crown came off and I, the molar right next to it must have been cracked because when it hit that hard surface, well, basically, both of those molars just fell into little jagged pieces. And there really wasn't much that could be done for them. They were, I mean, it was a mess. So the dentist that I had, that I was, hadn't been happy with for quite some time, I decided to try my wife's dentist, who she'd been going to, or at least that office, uh, since she was a little girl. Obviously, her original dentist had long retired. And um, he looked and he was like, yeah, this is a mess. So the only real option was to put implants in. And unfortunately, my insurance company refused to pay for it. And it was like $4,500 out of pocket for me. So yay for that. But he extracted the two back molars that were all janky put in the, the little stems that the, the teeth will attach to and then put in some some bone graft material to, to build up the jawline there. And then we waited and we waited and we waited for that material to harden and become part of the jaw, which it now has done. So today what's going to happen is they're going to... Uh, cut into the fleshy part of the jaw there on top, expose the, the two implants, and then screw the two teeth down. That's going to re, you know replace the molars that I used to have. And compared to everything that he's had to do in the past, especially the very first visit, this is like this is like a walk in the park. Though of course, you know, being a dental procedure, I'm still very nervous because, you know, that's what I do. But he's, he's a really good dentist. And uh, not only is he a licensed, and of course, practicing dentist, he's also a licensed um, anesthesiologist, which means that he knows how to make it so that you don't feel any pain, which makes me happy. Now, the, the weird thing is I left my house this morning to go to this dental appointment and when I got the car all set up and you know got the um, <laughs> got, got ways set up to, to get me to the dentist office which is a pretty good distance away 
I had been listening to an artist that was not a huge deal nationally, but was really, really big in the Northeast, especially in Ohio. Music artist. His name is still, he's still alive, still performs, as far as I know. Uh, Donny Iris and his biggest hit that people, if they Googled him, was a song called Alia, which was a, a pretty good song, but he had, he had some other good songs too. Well, back in, it was either 1981 or 1982, and I'm guessing it was 1982 because of where I was living at the time. Uh, I went to go to, with some friends of mine, I went to, to go to, the, to a Donny Iris concert. I'd never seen him in concert before, and everybody was was talking about how great he was and, and how he's the next, um, oh, I was going to name another obscure, Michael Stanley. He was like the next Michael Stanley of the Michael Stanley band. Another band nobody hardly knows of from that time period. But was also pretty good. And it was being held in a theater, actually not too far from where I lived. It was a pretty good sized theater, like probably two to two to three thousand seats. You know, this was this was not like just a great big huge open bar where you kind of mingle around and you know stand where you can and stand where you want to. This was this was a theater. And uh, they you know they started the show, it was really, really good. I was having a great time. And then I got to eat. I was hungry. So I got a barbecue beef sandwich and some onion chips, which are essentially, you know, they take an onion, they chop it up into good sized bits, coat all that with, you know, some kind of batter, and then deep fry it. And as I recall, you have to remember this was. 35 years ago, a long time ago. It was quite tasty. And the concert was fun. And I went home, woke up the next day, and spent almost the entire morning vomiting profusely. I mean, I was just like a fountain. (laughs) It was coming out. And I know how gross that sounds, but I was also running a really high fever. Uh, When I measured it, it was like 103, maybe a little higher. And I needed to go to the hospital. But there was nobody in the house that knew how to drive a car with a stick shift. And worse... There was nobody in the house that gave a damn whether I lived or died at the time, of the people that were in the house at the time. And because those people have now passed away, I'm not going to mention them. Respect for the dead and and all that. But they really didn't care that I was so sick. They just didn't want to take the time out of their oh-so-busy lives to take me to the hospital. So with a 103-degree fever, I climb into my... (laughs) <laughs> my 1980 Chevy Citation four speed and I drive myself to the hospital and I get there and I'm filling out the paperwork I, I'm barely conscious at this point I'm filling out the paperwork and I keep telling them I says I am really in bad shape and they're just yeah 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 wait your turn wait your turn and you know I'm fair to say that it's not unusual for people that are in an emergency room to declare themselves in terrible shape. So they finally, they finally get me in a room and a doctor comes in. Red light camera reported ahead. Yes, yes, yes. And he's checking me out and he gets a real look of concern on his face. And he was like, you know, we're going to get you on some fluids. So they... They basically got a, a huge bag of saline and started put, pumping that into me, and I passed out. I was just so out of it, I passed out. Woke up sometime later, 
and it looked like it looked like the bag had had hadn't really done anything. It hadn't really come out all that much. And I asked what time it was, and it had been like two to three hours. So I'd been passed out for like two to three hours. And this was a second bag that they set up <laughs> because of deep fried onion chips and a barbecued beef sandwich at a Donny Iris concert in 1982. Oh, God. That was probably the worst case of food poisoning that I've ever gotten. And I have eaten some some really, really odd food over the years, all of my travels. Anyway, so off to the dentist today. Thank you. If you would like to contact me and ask me for more stories of projectile vomiting, all you have to do is send me an email to guy at mymac.com. <clears throat> you can also find me on the Twitters. Uh, my Twitter handles are Mac Parrot, the one I've had for a very long time, and the one associated with my website, Vert Shark. Also, that's on Twitter. Uh, you can see all the stuff that I do, audio and video, and probably eventually some of my writing, over on VertShark.com. Uh, let's see. I do, besides this, I also do the Mac to the Future Go live cast on Wednesday nights. Just did one last night. And, of course, the thing that started it all, the MyMac.com podcast that I have been doing for 10 years with Gazmaz. We'll be recording again this weekend, I'm sure. So that is going to about... Oh, you know, I almost forgot to mention, if you'd like to support the things that I do, you can go to coffee.com, ko-fi.com, look for Mac Parrot and uh, do a one-time donation would be greatly appreciated. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash Mac Parrot and become a regular patron of the things that I do. I would really, really appreciate it. That would be, I would be ever so grateful for any financial support. Yeah, boy, they are just really, really giving me a hard time here. Let's, okay, I'm making the left. Is, is that good enough for you there? Is that good enough? So, that is going to about do it. Thank you for watching and or listening to Guy's Daily Drive. And I will catch you next time with all of my teeth. Yay! <laughs>